Hello everybody, it's Claire with another project for Scrap Effects. This is my third one for the month of April. So today I'm working on a cutout page. Um, you know if you followed my channel before that I do enjoy doing cutout pages and this stencil I felt lent itself really well to this. So I'm starting off with some black gesso on uh, the first page and I'm just sort of roughly filling the page. I'm not worrying too much about going to the edges apart from in the centre. And then when that was dry, I'm putting black gesso on the back of the same page. So there is gesso on the first page and the reverse of that as well. And then I got the uh, Majestic Moth stencil from Scrap FX and positioned it kind of on an angle in the middle of the page. So I'm going to make sure that there's a border around the edge of the page and the moth is on that angle in the middle. So I'm just drawing around the stencil um, and I'd already decided that I wasn't going to cut out every single um, hole in the stencil so some of them I would kind of join together but doing a cutout really is, is something it is quite fun to do and you just have to take your time. I often put um, a podcast or a film on or something and just kind of do it really slowly. There's no rush. So obviously this is sped up a little bit. Um, I use, um, I think it's like a medical scalpel. So it is very sharp, but it does make it nice and easy. Um, so I'm just cutting away some of the pieces and then you'll notice some of the areas where there are really small, small bits of the stencil. I actually join some together and just make a larger cutout. It did take me quite a while to do this, so I guess if you're not so confident doing the cutout, you could um, just stencil the moth on your first page if you wanted, or just cut out larger pieces. Because the idea is about having the colour that's going to go behind and make it look really pretty. And there we go. Looks really effective already. I was quite pleased with it. So then I'm adding some stamping to the border of the page using black archival ink and a text stamp. This is something that Tracy Scott does and it just adds another element of depth to the black. Then I'm adding some gesso to the page that is behind the moth. This is the one that's going to have all the colour added to it. So then I added some of the dots and lines rice paper. This is also from Scrap FX and I stuck that down using gel matte medium. I have been asked previously where I got my enormous jar of <laughs> gel matte medium from. It's a Windsor & Newton one. Um, it is quite a good size. I think it's 500 mils. Um, it seems to be lasting me forever, which is brilliant. So then I added in some um, uh, music paper as well, just as a that piece was being so naughty it kept moving. Um, just to add a different um, element to the page. This is the nine dot stamp also from Scrap FX and again I'm using the black ink pad. This is just about really taking away the blankness of the page and just giving me a background to get started with. And then this is the leafy seaweed stencil. I'm just um, really stamping that quite lightly. I didn't want it too dark. And then I actually did feel that the collage elements were are quite dominant so using a bit of gesso and a brayer I just added a little bit of uh, white gesso over the top. So then I'm starting with the colour so I'm using Dina Wakely media paint and I started with ruby and then cheddar and then uh, lemon then lime. I wasn't worrying too much about the colours mixing because I do actually go in when it's all dry and add some more colours on top just to build the layers. This is turquoise and then a magenta and finally blackberry. 
which is really dark, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so then once it was dry, I felt that the colours weren't quite popping enough, so I just went in again and added some dashes of, of the same colours, just looking to see where those colours would sit with where the moth was going to be on the page. I love the contrast between the black cut out and the bright colours behind. Works really well. So I'm just layering up the colours all the time, building the interest that's there. And then um, I'm just using the leafy seaweed stencil and a little bit of gesso, keeping it quite thin. And I'm only adding that uh, stencil where the moth is going to be. Um, can't really explain why I did this. I don't really know why I did it, but I quite liked the effect when it was finished. And then these are some st uh, stamps from Darkroom Door, and um, as you can see, I've not used them before, so I'm having to cut them up so that I can stamp my words out. I did debate about writing the words myself, but actually stamping them out just gives a different element to handwriting, so I was quite pleased with how this looked when it was finished. So I stamped out the words spread your wings and fly and then I'm just uh, gluing those down onto the page. So some of the words do show through um, on the page where the cutout is and some don't. Then I'm using a dotting tool but if you don't have one you can just use the end of a paintbrush um, and you see that I managed to smudge that one, <laughs> not being very awake. Um, and I'm just using some permanent red violet in, uh, light and uh, turquoise just to add some pops of colour onto the moth. I mean it would have been really pretty with rainbow dots on but I wondered whether that might have blended in too much with the background. So then once that was dry I used a Signo Uniball in white, it's so just a, a white gel pen and I just outlined the wings, the outline of the wings for the moth, almost in a stitching type pattern. And there we go, I think that is it. So there is the finished page. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, video for Scrap FX and um, maybe you'll have a go at making a cutout page of your own. Thank you for watching.